Ladies and gentlemen, on this video, we're going to do the even questions, all right? So the idea in this class, we're going to be doing the even ones. You guys practice with the odd ones because uh, if you understand one, you'll be able to do the other. So number two, we have an equation that has a bunch of fractions in it. And the way to get rid of a fraction is to do what? Multiply everything by the denominator, right? Um, so we have a bunch of, we have a three and a six. Let's go for the bigger one, six. So when we multiply everything by six, let me zoom in a bit here. Put the six up on top, the times six up on top, the times six up on top. See, when you have that six up on top, anything on top of a fraction is really being divided by what's on the bottom. That's what a, a fraction really is. It's a division problem. So when you have a six up on top divided by three on the bottom, what is six divided by three? Two. So I could put a line through it and put a two up there because six divided by three is two. Um, what is two times two? Four. So we have our first item that's a four right there. And over here, when we divide the six by six, six divided by six is one. It cancels out. The only thing left is a plus one with a Q, right? So let's put plus one Q. And then the equal sign comes down. And then right here, six divided by six cancels out. And we have a five Q left over. And then the six on top divided by three on the bottom. Let's think about that. What's six divided by three? Two. So you can put a two up here and then you have the two times one, which is two. So we really have a plus two. Let's write that plus two. Why did I put that five Q in black? Let me change it. There we go. That kind of reminds me of, of, a, of a joke. What's five Q plus five Q? Five Q plus five Q. You're welcome. Ten, it's a joke. Five Q plus ten Q. You're welcome. Ten Q. Thank you. Oh, okay. It's not funny. All right. Okay. All right. So we got rid of the fractions. We got rid of the fractions. Now let's get G or let's get Q by itself on one side. So uh, you could either subtract five Q, move it over here, or you could subtract one Q, move it over there. Um, I'm going to subtract the one Q and move it to the right side. I don't want Q's on both sides. I don't want variables on both sides. So what I do to one side, I do to the other. And of course, five Q take away one Q is four Q. Well, that sounds like a bad word. Hey, four Q, man. No, four Q equals, we have the plus two right here and bring down the four over here. So we have moved the Q to the right side of the equal sign. Now let's get it by itself on the right side. So I am going to get rid of that two by doing the opposite of plus two minus two. What I do to one side, I do to the other side. My new equation is four take away two, that's two equals four Q. And now I need to get rid of that four times right in front of the Q. I need to get rid of the multiplication of four. So I'm gonna do the opposite, divide by four, divide by four. Now, could we actually divide two by four? No. Four divided by two is two, but two divided by four, you can't. That's a fraction, but we could reduce that fraction, right? We have Q equals reduce two and four, reduce them both by two, and you'll get one half. So your final answer is, let's write the Q on the left side and the one half on the right side. Q equals one half. I mean, honestly, that's probably one of the harder questions there is with fractions. If you understand that, you'll be good on the test tomorrow. Uh, let's jump to number four. Again, the odd ones are explained on another video. If you need help on those odd ones, let's say you're doing the odd ones for homework tonight and need help, watch uh, the video on Edmodo that has the odd questions explained. So right here on number four, there are no fractions, okay. Uh, I, do I have any distributed property to do or combining like terms on the left side? So this is already what we call a simplified equation. So we could jump right into the goal of getting the letter by itself on one side. Where's my J at? Is it on the left side of the equal sign or on the right side of the equal sign? It's on both, right? It's on both sides of the equal sign. I don't want J's on both sides. I only want J on one side. And then after that, I could worry about getting it by itself. So let's get rid of one of these J's. Which one do you want to get rid of? You want to get rid of this minus five J? That's probably what I would do. 
Um, and you don't have to do that. You could, have, you could get rid of the 3J if you wanted to by subtracting 3J. I want to get rid of that minus 5J by doing what? Um, Adding five of those Js. You see, if you have five Js and you owe five Js, you're not going to have any Js left over. It's going to cancel out. And what you do to one side, you must do to the other to maintain the balance on your equation. So let's rewrite what we have. We have 16, uh, 3 plus 5 is 8, and we are talking about those Js. Bring down the equal sign, um, and the only thing left on the right side is a nice, beautiful number, 18. So we have J on the left side of the equal sign. We want to get it by itself. What do we do? Yeah, let's get that 16 out of there first. What you do to one side, you do to the other. 18 take away 16 is 2. Bring down the equal sign. Uh, bring down the 8J. We have a nice one-step equation, 8J equals 2. So how do I get rid of this multiplication of 8 in front of the J? Divide it by 8, divide it by 8. And there's your answer. J equals 2 eighths. 2 divided by 8 you can't do. So it's a fraction, but could you reduce that fraction? Yeah, you could reduce both top and bottom by 2, giving you a final answer of 1 fourth. So J equals 1 fourth. By the way, the answers are on the back side of your last page of the practice test, all right? So uh, when you're working on these, if you need uh, to check your answer, you should check your answer always. Check the back, and you'll see if you have it right or wrong. Um, and of course, if you want an explanation, get on Edmodo and watch the videos. Let's jump in, jump into number six. Again, no fractions. This one does require simplification. What does simplification mean? Distributed property or combining like terms. And we're going to look at one side at a time. Let's look at the right side. Is there anything to distribute or anything to add or subtract right here? No. It's just a nice, beautiful 2N. Now, on the left side, there's definitely distributed property. There, we're going to take that positive 2 and distribute it. Positive 2 times N is positive 2N. Positive 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, and then I'm going to bring down the 5 that's in front. And notice that even though it's, I don't need a, I mean, I do need a plus sign. When it's a positive 2n, I put the plus sign in there. That way I don't make the mistake of multiplying. It's actually adding. So we have three terms on the left side. Out of those three terms, which ones could I combine? 5 plus 2. 5 plus 2. What is 5 plus 2? Seven. 7. So what do we have left on the left side? We have 2n plus 7. And then, of course, the equal sign comes down. And also the 2n comes down. So this is now what we call a simplified equation. We've already distributed. We've already combined like terms. Now let's get the n by itself on one side. So do you want to get rid of this 2n or do you want to get rid of that 2n? OK, let's get rid of uh, this 2n. But what you do to one side, you must do to the other. And weird, it cancels. So in order to understand our answer, what do we have left? We have a 7 on the left side. And is there anything left on the right side? There's no solution. Yeah. If there's nothing left, that's a zero. And we know that 7 cannot equal zero. 7 doesn't equal zero. 7 equals 7. So when you end up with something impossible like that, like 7 equals zero, we say no, as in no solution. Okie doke. Now, if you would have ended up with something that's always true, like 7 equals 7, then you would say all real numbers because x could be any real number that you want. Okay, let's move on to number eight. It's on the next page. Really simple. Eight. We have a fraction. We want to get rid of that fraction. What do I do? Vash Vashti, this says w divided by thirteen. If I didn't want this divided by thirteen, what could I do? Multiply by 13, right? So let's actually put a times 13 right here, okay? So the 13 and the 13 cancel, but what I do to one side, I must do to the other side. So what do we have left on the left side? We have the negative sign with the W. Let's actually write that. Negative W equals, and 9 times 13, that's 117, yeah? Okay. So what do we do next? Divide by negative one. 
or multiply by negative one, or you could just say, you know what, I'm gonna change the sign, and what I do to one side, I do to the other side. So my answer is W equals 117. Number 10, Amy, what do you say we do? What's the first step? You wanna get P by itself. Like there's not even, there's no distributed property, there's no combining like terms. Here's P, it's on the left side of the equal sign, I want it by itself on the left side of the equal sign. In other words, I don't want this two, and I don't want this divided by negative five. So which one do you wanna get rid of first? The P, the, uh, you, wanna, you wanna get the P by itself, so what, what do you want to get rid of first, the minus 5 or the plus 2? Okay, if you wanted to get rid of this division of negative 5, you could multiply everything by negative 5, and that'll cancel it out, right? However, if you do multiply by negative 5 right here, you're going to end up with a negative 10 and also a negative 50. So it's slightly easier to get rid of the 2 first, right? Not only that, it's kind of like P's the movie star. This guy's like the movie star's buddy. This guy's the, lo the loner at the corner. You don't care about this guy. It's better to get rid of this guy first. So let's subtract two. What you do to one side, you do to the other side. Your new equation becomes P divided by negative five equals eight. And if you don't want that division of negative five, you're gonna do the opposite of dividing by negative five, which is multiplying by that same value, negative five. And what you do to one side, you do to the other side, the negative fives cancel out, you're gonna end up with P equals negative 40. Now again, you could have multiplied everything by negative five first to get rid of the fraction. That would have caused this to be a bigger number, caused this to be a bigger number. So you'll still get the same answer, it just has slightly bigger numbers. It's not really that big of a deal. Moving on to number 12. We finally have a fraction again. How do I get rid of that fraction? Multiply everything by 9. Okay, so if I wanted to get rid of the fraction first, I'd multiply everything by 9. This times 9, which would cancel this times 9. But see, that would give me 81, huh? And this times 9. So what's the smarter thing to do? You want to get rid of that 9, right? And how do we get rid of that 9? Subtracting 9. Subtracting 9. And we'll have a negative 5 over 9 with the K left over equals negative uh, 15. So this made it slightly easier. Either way, you're going to be able to use a calculator. Um, with the calculator, what would I have to do to get rid of that fraction? Subtract, multiply, multiply both sides by 9. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the 9's cancel. I have a negative 5 with the K left over equals negative 135. You guys did that with the calculator? Yeah. Thank you. And for my final step, we're going to divide by negative 5, divide by negative 5, and with the calculator, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and what's our answer to 135 divided by 5? 27? So let's write this down, k equals positive 27. Let's move on to number 14. Final page of the practice test, number 14, more fractions. Now, this is a ginormous fraction, right? It has a binomial on top of this 5. So when we get rid of this fraction, we're going to multiply everything by 5. But in reality, it's just two things. It's just this times 5 and this times 5. The 5s do cancel. What I have left is a 17 take away k equals negative 7 times 5. That's negative 35. Really easy problem to do. How do I get rid of that 17? Oh, minus. minus 17. 17 take away 17 is 0. That's why it's gone. And what I do to one side, I do to the other side, minus 17. And if you're not too sure about this, use a calculator. And you will get negative k equals negative 52, correct? If you owe 35 and you owe 17, you're going to owe a total of 52. For my final step, I don't want a negative K, I want to make it a positive K, so just change the sign, change the sign, there's your answer, K equals 52. Of course, the correct explanation would be, yeah, I divide this side by negative 1 and divide this side by negative 1, that's how I get positive 52. Number 16, 
No fraction, even easier. What do I do? Ivan, what do you say? Ivan? Ivan, where's the x at? Is it on the left side of the equal sign or the right side of the equal sign? It's on the left. You want it by itself. You don't want this 21, you don't want the 5. Which one do you get rid of first? The 5. All right, so how do I get rid of a plus 5? You subtract, right? The inverse operation of adding and subtracting. What you do to one side, you must do to the other side. This cancels out. We will have 21x equals 63. And to get rid of the multiplication of 21 in front of the x, what do we do? Divide by 21, divide by 21. And with the calculator, you'll see that 63 divided by 21 is a nice, beautiful answer, 3. Yay. Moving on. Number 18, word problem. And they want us to write the equation and actually find the answer. Now, we did a couple of these word problems uh, yesterday. This one's very similar to one that we did yesterday, very similar to one that you're going to see on the test tomorrow. So what does less than mean? I mean subtract, right? Now, the word than implies what? You switch it, right? So whatever's first, the five is not going to actually be first. It's actually going to be second. So I'm really going to put five over here. And the one-fifth of a number, that's the fraction one-fifth of a number. I'm going to call it x. I'm going to put that over here. So the five went over there. And the one-fifth of a number, one-fifth x, is over here. And then what does it say? It says is, which means equals 2. Equals 2. There's your equation. And they also want us to find the number, right? So they want us to solve it. So let me rewrite this. One-fifth x minus 5 equals 2. If you don't switch it with that less than, if you don't switch it, then you're not going to get the right answer. You're going to have the wrong equation, which will produce the wrong answer. <coughs> Let's get rid of that minus 5 by going plus 5, plus 5. My new equation is 1 fifth x equals 7. For my final step, what do I do to get rid of that fraction? Five. Times 5, times 5. So your final answer is x equals 35. Last question number 20. How do I get rid of that fraction? Multiply by 6. Multiply by 6. Again, notice that I put the 6 up on top, not down here. Because when it's on top, it's saying 6 divided by 6. That cancels out. 6 divided by 6 is 1. So what I have left here is 5k. Equal sign comes down. 35 times 6, calculator time, 210. And then take that 5 times k equals 210. Let's get rid of that multiplication of 5 by doing the inverse operation. It's dividing by that same value, 5. Divide by 5 with the calculator. 210 divided by 5 is 22. 42. K equals 42. And we are done with the even ones. So for the rest of the class, let's work on the odd ones. Uh, I do have solutions, worked out solutions on the wall back there. You have your answers on the last page. And of course, you have the videos to every single one, the evens and the odds uploaded this evening on Edmodo. By the way, Edmodo check-in. Please make sure you respond to the post with your last name, comma, first name. I want to make the Edmodo check-in worth twice as much this time. Today. Today. Why twice as much? A lot of people haven't been doing it, so you have a really low grade. I want to give you that opportunity to bring it up, so it's going to be worth twice as much. Check in tonight. If you can't check in, let's clear your, let's get your password. Let's get everything set up right now.